Good afternoon and welcome to my Soko Chats. And today I'm chatting to Humphrey Chola, an old friend, an old uh, colleague and uh, marketing professional within um, the African space. So Humphrey, welcome and thank you very much for agreeing to have this interview with us and this chat. I know times are unusual at the moment, so it's fantastic that we could get some time with you. My name is Aham Pichola, and um, I've spent most of my life working in uh, branded marketing. Um, I currently work for ABSA, and uh, we've, the last, we've just finished actually a very exciting journey the last three years, uh, rebranding from Barclays uh, across the African continent and we also did a, a brand refresh in South Africa. So we've just finished a very exciting project and we're now operating as apps across uh, the whole continent. So I've spent the last uh, three and a half years uh, on that journey. Um, I've done previous stints in telecoms and customer experience, and uh, I've also worked in brand and marketing for a number of uh, multinational corporations. So thank you for having me on this chat. So it's fantastic. And um, the one question for you, Obviously, you went through a, a long process of rebranding. And did you finish before the lockdown started? And how has that impacted some of the work you've been doing um, within the rebranding project for APSA? So, so it's actually been, um, it was interesting because we, complete, we completed the project just as uh, COVID was starting to, to break out and be declared a, a pandemic across the globe. Um, it's interesting times. Obviously, we had to adjust um, some of our plans, um, our brand building plans were essentially kind of just uh, starting. So we finished the physical part of, of the job, changing our branches, um, changing our visual identity and starting to launch that. Um, and, and, and COVID started. Um, obviously, some countries were in lockdown, travel was clamped down. Um, so it's, it's, it's been a very interesting journey. And I think we've also had to adjust and adapt. I think that's the critical thing for all of us. Uh, all of us have had to adapt to new ways of working and how we communicate um, and channels of media that we use uh, to communicate. If you had plans, for instance, on out of home, um, you start communicating a lot more direct, digital, uh, some of the areas that we sort of had to adjust our comms plans. So what about you personally? Can you tell us two things that have uh, significantly changed in your life through this process? Um, a lot of people have learned to, to work from home. And, and adjusting. So I, th I think the two interesting things for me was a convergence of my personal living space um, with my workspace. They literally now coexist. Um, and, and it was an interesting journey. I think quite frustrating in, in the initial part. Um, I just found the hours were much longer. Um, I had to change my rhythm, you know, your, your time you, you get up to the time you go to bed. And just that whole interaction has been a very interesting journey for me. I think secondly, it's also just adjust, adjusting and learning the discipline of also managing your time and still being able to keep a work-life balance. I think that that's important. Um, keeping your mind healthy, um, not being able to go to the gym, for instance, and having to work out a lot more from home. So there's certain levels of discipline that kind of come into your personal space uh, that you have to actively uh, manage. Um, it's not an accident and you have to be very deliberate about it and um, quite a bit of discipline as well to sort of manage that balance between different as aspects of your life confined in a particular space. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that because again we're seeing that there's opportunity for new habits forming through this process and for us to be able to learn how to very quickly uh, adjust to new things, become more flexible, create completely new schedules of working, incorporate home and children and all sorts of things that we didn't have to worry about before. Certainly. So what do you think that this is going to do for marketing? What do you think that the COVID uh, pandemic has done for marketing within the continent? And where do you see this changing us um, in a perhaps a different format or a different way or just a completely more deliberate uh, way of functioning as marketers or do you think we'll just go back to what we've always done? I don't see a total return um, to, to things. So, so, so the funny thing about life is I, I think there are certain natural laws that still remain the same. 
Um, if you look at, let me use probably, you know, a, a telephone as an example. Um, technology just changes the form of how you actually engage and, and communicate. Um, but from days when, you know, people would communicate with a drum, um, you know, eventually, you know, we had the landline uh, that, that came and then cell phones came. And, and now your, your phone is actually a tool that you use for work. Um, you do video calls, you use it as a camera, um, you use it as your email device. Um, so, so there's so much that, that one does um, that simply changes uh, form. But at the bottom of it is how do people communicate and how do people interact? Um, I think those needs uh, don't change. And for me, going into the space of COVID, I, th I think needs, which is what marketers do to satisfy, fundamentally remain the same. Um, I think it's how do you bring convenience and how do you bring about different experiences. I think those are the critical things that will change, particularly in our time. And adopting digital is no longer a choice. Um, online online activity, you know, people now can order things online. And in, in the countries where there were probably lags in services that, that bring delivery to your doorstep, um, being able to buy and purchase, you know, or sell things online, it's no longer a choice. Um, you know, like I said, ways of working, remote working, you can be anywhere in the world and still be productive. Um, I think a lot of us had the mindset that you have to sit behind a desk and, you know, your colleagues are able to see you, people to know you're productive. Um, but it's no longer a choice, so there's a big difference. Um, but significantly, what I'd like to point out and my perspective on, on, on this is also 2020 has sort of, you know, brought quite a number of interesting things to the fore. Um, and I think in the midst of COVID, we've also seen, you know, a, a big um, conversation on, on race relations um, and purpose for brands. Um, so suddenly we were seeing brands begin to talk about, you know, Black Lives Matter, for instance. Um, and I think that critically brands are also going into that space where the values of the organization become critical. It's no longer enough to just say, you know, we support, you know, um, diversity or, you know, we support certain groups who are maligned in society. Um, but an organization has to demonstrate. Um, when we talk about the environment, it's no longer just a talking shop. Um, a company has to show their footprint and what they're doing to make change. And consumers are a lot more engaging and, and, and you kind of find that, you know, between the functional bits of what we deliver in terms of products and services, um, also have to speak to the values. Um, brands are like people, they've got personality, they've got character. Um, we choose the friends that we engage with. I like this one, I don't like that one because of what they stand for. And I think that consumers are increasingly, particularly with social media and, and, and the transparency and the amount of information that's available about brands, people are beginning to choose brands for what they stand for, for the things that they, they speak and demonstrate they can do. So it's no longer just, I don't know you. It's, an, it's no longer an, an, an impersonal transaction where you walk into a store and pick up a brand from the shelf. Um, people are also getting interested to see, you know, what does a CEO of a company think about, you know, a certain issue, a social issue. Um, so it's a very interesting space. Um, it's tough for a lot of brands, but I think it's an interesting space to watch and see the conversations as they pan out. Mm -hmm.